Let's start. The project name is the validation. Let's see the project structure. Here we have the main activity and a validation manager class that handles the validations. And in the UI, we have an activity underscore main.xml file, which is the layout of the main activity. Let's see the UI. In the activity underscore main.xml file, we have various edit texts for various inputs like normal text, email address, phone number, password etc. And we have a submit button. Let's see the code. The constraint layout is the root layout. This is the first edit text for normal text. The input type is text. This is the second edit text for phone number. The input type is phone. This is the third edit text for email address. The input type is text email address. This is the fourth edit text for password. The input type is text password. This is the fifth edit text for password re-entry. The input type is text password. And this is the submit button. Let's see the Java code now. This is the validation manager class. These are the data members. The error setter is an interface which handles the error messages of the edit texts. We need the 10 digit phone number only. This regex is used for the email address validation. These are the error messages which we will show in the edit texts accordingly. These boolean variables are used for validation checks. First, we implement the singleton object creation pattern so that this class has a single object throughout the app life cycle. This is the error setter interface with a function called setError. This interface is implemented by the main activity and this function writes error messages in the edit texts. This function sets the context and the edit text which currently needs to be validated. This function checks if the text in an edit text is empty or not. This function validates the phone number, it checks if the entered phone number is of 10 digits or not. This function validates email address. This function matches the passwords entered in the password and password re-entry edit texts. This function checks if all the edit text validations are OK or not. These are the imports. This is the main activity that implements the error setter interface and a text watcher interface. These are the data members. In the onCreate function, we set the onClick listener of the submit button. When the button is clicked, we get the instance of the validation manager class. Then we call the do validation function and pass the context and the edit texts name it, whose validation we want perform. And then we call different validation functions like check empty, check phone number, check email, match password respective to the edit text. An important thing to notice is that the check empty function is always called before calling any other validation function. Then we call the is all valid function, which tells us if all the edit texts have valid inputs or not. Then we call the set text watcher function. In this function, we set the text watchers for all the edit texts. The set error function of the error interface sets error messages into the edit texts. This sets an error message below the edit text field in red color. The text watcher interface has overridden functions like before text changed, on text changed, after text changed. In the after text changed function, if an edit text had an error message before, but now that error is solved, then we disable the error message here. Let's run the app.
So that's it. That's how you can implement edit text validation in Java Android. Thanks for watching.